Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birds. It is week 52 here at camp. 52 weeks equals one year. Yeah, our first episode came out, I think, on September 6th. I can't believe it, you guys. This is like a full calendar year of you guys being campers, us being counselors, and the Camp Counselor Podcast. I am just over the moon. So grateful for all of you guys. Yes, thank you so much. If it weren't for you guys, we literally would have no reason to come back here and speak into microphones. So thank you for listening and for all of your kind uh, reviews. I was reading some of them today. They're so nice. You guys are so nice. Yeah, and you guys are just like so funny, especially on YouTube and on Patreon. On. Like the, you guys believe in the lore and you feed into the gossip and you continue the lies that we spread here. And it's just fable upon fable. And you guys have really continued the tradition. I feel like we're seriously a giant family here. And uh, my heart is overflowing with gratitude and joy and love for all of you. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're so excited to do another episode of Camp Counselors. But before we jump into today's episode, we do have a little announcement. Just a small, tiny one. Before morning announcement, because it's kind of personal. It's kind of big. It's kind of exciting. And we need to tell you, know, we need to let you know now. These two gays cannot hold in a secret like a pregnant woman holding in their bladder. So starting next Monday, September 11th, we will be doing Monday episodes as well. Mini episodes. Ed, do you want to tell them what it's called? Let's say together okay three two one trail, trail mix. mix so all of those other segments that we cut before this summer because it was just too much doing the show mm -hmm. we're bringing back we're talking gossip dog we're talking confession canoe we're talking dear counselor and we're talking scary stories around the campfire so every monday we're going to be doing episodes dedicated truly to the content that you guys send to us yeah. through the website through the email and we're going to be reading your stories we stopped doing it because it became a little overwhelming but we've heard your comments and we've heard that people really miss the segments as do we so we spent yeah. the entire weekend shuffling through almost over like a hundred emails. Yeah, it was about four hours per person and we only got back to like halfway through yeah. July. So it was a lot and you guys were still submitting. So it's like, I've, like there's good stuff in here. We might as well, you know, go through it. And do two episodes a week. Why not? Yeah, so Mondays will be a lot shorter. It's not going to be these segments. It's going to be the segments that we used to have. And they're just going to be a uh, grab bag, like trail mix. You never know what you're going to pour out. You never know what stories you're going to get. You never know what segments you're going to get. But we're so excited to be here twice a week. If that was too much, well, buckle in because you, you're you going to want it. Because <laughs> I'm not joking. We already recorded two episodes of it. And the stories that you guys have are life-altering, hysterical, I'm crying, I'm scared for my life for you, and I just can't wait for you guys to hear it. Yeah, you guys had us giggling, kicking our little feet, cackling, slapping our knees. It is, you guys are funny. So look out for Trail Mix next Monday and every Monday after that. And we do have EpiPens for those who are allergic to peanuts, so everyone can can be included. Yeah, a nut-free option is always available mm -hmm. here at Camp Shady Birch. Um, but speaking of this incredible milestone, a year at Camp, Camp Counselor Podcast, a new day of the week, a new show. Yeah. I got us thinking, guys. We were like, what are other things that we're super excited for to celebrate? Like, what are future milestones that we haven't hit that I'm like, oh, I can't wait for that. So we've compiled a list, five and five. We, we love a list. You know we love to have like an, a good number. So 10 is always good for us. Yeah. We're going to go back and forth and tell you guys other events that we're looking forward to celebrating. Yes. Okay. So the milestone I'm looking forward to celebrating, sorry, I'm taking, I'm just going to go, no, go first. go for it. Go for it. Is going to be um, my first Christmas album. I cannot wait. You've been, you've been dreaming this up for years. I've been dreaming it up. I have written down absolutely nothing. I don't know a studio to record it in, um, but I'm a, I'm a dreamer like you are and many at Camp Shady Birch. So I feel like one day I can make it happen. It might not be this year. It might not be next year. Maybe by, by the time I'm 40. Who knows? But that's a milestone I'm looking forward to. Are you planning on doing originals, covers? Like, is this a mix? I think it's going to be a mix. I'm definitely going to get my inspiration from uh, Rosie O'Donnell Christmas. 
I you love her albums. So, she has two of them. The first one is better than the latter. But um, but yeah, I think maybe I'll have some features on there. I don't know. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll poll the audience and see what they want. But I think it's going to be a mix of originals. Sometimes I'll be like walking down the block around campus and I'm just singing a song. I'm like, wait, that should be written down, put on a CD, mastered and sent out into the ether. So I think we're going to do some originals as well. Is there a certain Christmas song that you thought like, oh, I want to cover that, like a Silent Night, Jingle Bell Rock? Um, Silent Night is kind of boring, so I'm probably going to avoid that one. Wow. I know. What's a Christmas album without Silent Night? A good one. <gasps> Enough said. It's your album. Go yeah. off, baby. And it's going to be inclusive, so I don't know what other kinds of songs that I'm going to include. But it, but it's going to be fun, and every, I'm going to force everybody to listen to it. We're going to meet at the Planetarium, and I'm going to play it at maximum volume. I'll bring the gingerbread cookies. Yes. Perfect. So what have you got? What's your milestone you're looking forward to? Um, visiting all the Disney parks. Okay. I've always wanted to do that since I was a little girl. How many have you been to thus far? One. Okay. <laughs> I've only been to the one in Orlando. Um, I've been a bunch. How many are there? Well, there's California. Yes. Disneyland. There is Paris. Paris. There's, I think there's um, Hong Kong and Shanghai. What do they call the Paris one? Disney Disneyland Paris Disneyland I think the only world is I believe I'm not even sure is Orlando I just think that would be a fun milestone and I'm in a lot of Disney Facebook groups I am a Disney adult I'm not like insane about it like other people but I like do love Disney World mm -hmm. and I it's like it's almost like getting an EGOT it's yeah. like, okay, you get an EGOT, congrats. I don't give a fuck. I visited all the Disney parks. Get an EGOT at Epcot. So I'm really excited to celebrate that with you and with Clarabelle. How fun. Oh my God, Clarabelle. I know. I can't wait to meet her and take a picture with her. I can't wait for that either. She needs more merch still. What's next for you? Okay, my next, um, my next milestone I'm looking forward to is attending my first county fair. I have never been to a county fair, have you? Yeah, I've been to a Massachusetts one. I don't know if it counts. I've been to huge county fairs. The Big E, if yeah. you know, you know. The Barnstable County Fair is in Massachusetts and that is a county fair. Okay, so I don't know if I, the Big E, it looks fun. We did talk about this last year, but I kind of want to go to like a small town one. I want Gingham. You've never been to like a fair ever? I've been to a fair, but the county fair, I'm thinking there's like cows in the meadow. There's that weird gumball machine that you put a quarter in and out comes all that weird stuff that you feed to the goats. I want a pie eating contest i want to win a pie eating contest you got to go to the wisconsin dells i've been to the wisconsin dells well you aren't gonna tell me that the wisconsin doesn't have a big county fair um they have one but it's not at the dells but you're right i should go there but the pie eating contest actually i don't think i would win um but a free pie there's so some things middle america does best yeah and it's making butter mm -hmm. and it's county fairs yeah like you're not going to get the real zhush of a county fair unless you're somewhere in a, a corn bearing state can you imagine you and me at the top of a Ferris wheel with one of those paper baskets that has like super hot fries that are a little overcooked and like the best homemade ketchup that you could ever imagine? I wish you could eat on Ferris wheels, but they typically don't allow you to. Well, we can sneak it in. Yeah, I'll put it I'll put it in my bosom. I was going to say my fanny pack or just my fanny. Oh, I love that. So what else is <laughs> What's your next milestone? I want to get on a jury duty. Okay, a jury. Okay. I've I've been selected for jury duty. This I'm getting I'm having my third one coming up soon. I'm always asked to join the party, but right before they make selections, I'm always dropped. There's something about me that isn't alluring to the legal system, and I'm confused because I've seen probably 19 seasons of SVU. Okay. Okay. I I've seen a lot of Grey's Anatomy, so I have my medical terminology up. I'm a leader in my community. I am trustworthy to a fault, and I believe that I can really give my opinion. I don't know what about me is not alluring to a lawyer. Maybe I'm too impactful. I was going to say, do you think it's a threat? You're a little, it's a little bit of a threat. Should I go there and act a little bit more naive to the, the way that things run? Yeah. I just want to be selected <laughs> as a juror and I will lie and I'll tell everybody everything I ever heard. I'm not going to keep it secret because whatever, find me if you need to, send me to jail. I want to spread the gossip. Okay. Yeah. So I really want to get on a jury. Well, um, part of me wants to say, I hope that doesn't happen, but I know that you want it to happen. It's my wish. Why would you hope that against okay, me? Okay. Then, then I, then I wish it just happens. Just support my wishes. I'm supporting, but when that letter comes in the mail, you, we just can't be upset about it. No, I, I want, I, okay. I, I keep paying jury duty. I get it. I just want to like actually make it worth it. Like if you're going to waste my time, then pick me, choose me, love me. Amen. Okay. okay. You're up next. Um, Okay, so my next. Oh, I want to. I want to win my first sweepstakes. 
Yeah. Is there a sweepstakes in, in, in that comes to mind that you're like, oh, I would have loved to win that one? The animals. That is probably one of the most successful campaigns ever because everyone remembers it. But who won it? They the YouTube videos are available. Oh, okay, so somebody did win it in yep. Israel. Because sometimes when they do these sweep sweepstakes, I'm like, is there really a winner? Well, they it's in their best legal interest as someone who has been studying paralegal law hmm. to select a winner. Because if you don't, it will come out and you will be fined. Like the McDonald's monopoly, McMillions. Yeah, you tried to get me to watch that documentary and I was so bored. It was boring, but it is scandalous, but it was boring. I like the sweepstakes that used to be on the bottle of uh, the bottle caps of Sprite. And you'd be like, oh, I want a free digital download. Oh my God, I forgot about that. I was always like typing in my little, punching in my little code on my little desktop. And I was like, hello. What did you win? Just um, like a, a song? I won a digital download. What, what Was it a song or what is it that's digitally being downloaded? I don't say it was any of your business. Oh, okay. It All was right. my digital download. And what I selected to digital, digitalize, digitize, it's my download. No, I'm joking. It was a song. And I okay. probably chose Kobe Calais. Amen. Because if I'm going to win anything, I want Kobe to Calais to be involved. Oh, another thing I'm going to kind of like double double down on this, another milestone within this little umbrella, I would love to like win tickets on the radio. However, I don't listen to the radio and I don't call into the radio. Mm -hmm. I don't call in for pizza. I order it. I get too nervous. So my friend Jocelyn that used to work with at Joe's, she wins radio contests all the time, but they've kind of modernized it. You want me to tell you about this? Yeah. So the radio station has an application on the phone. Okay. An app. And you can enter with your already saved information and click a little button and they automatically enter you into the contest and they announce it on the radio. And then they also do a little push notification on your phone. So gone are the days of having to call in. Oh, so it's like a raffle now. Yes. it's They've made it a lot easier. Mm. So you really could, it's not going to be as classic. Yeah. You're not going to have to call in, but you still can participate in winning concert tickets. Oh, that kind of ruins the allure because I just want to have like me and all my friends and like all five of my iPhones lined up and my Blackberry. And I just want to call on every single one of them, hoping that I'm caller number seven. Yeah. Well, we, as, as time progresses, so does technology. Uh, every day we stray further from his righteous path. I agree. Um, so what is your next, your next uh, milestone? I want to learn how to swim slash tread water. Okay. As some of you do know, I can doggy paddle. And that's kind of where it ends for me. Youngest of four, only one to never get a swimming lesson. It's hurtful. It's the truth. I'm being honest. I'm being vulnerable. And I have been told, I've, I've been very public about this. Every time I'm in a pool or an ocean, I let everyone know that I can't swim for my own safety. And there always proceeds to be someone in the group, and it's been you at some points, that loves to be like, oh, I can teach you. No, you can't. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. I hope at some point I am paired up with an Olympic swimmer, i.e. Michael Phelps, who is classically trained in swim lessons that can teach me to, at, at baseline, just tread water. Because if I'm ever on a boat and it goes down, I, I'm going to give up. I'm not even going to fight because it's inevitable that I will pass. So I'm looking forward to the day that I finally figure that out. And I'll celebrate that day. Yeah. And I'll celebrate there with you. Thank you. What do you have next on your list? Uh, next on my list is to be a part of my first ever flash mob. Yeah, you've been dreaming for this for a while. We went on a Disney trip and the people we were there with did, in fact, do a flash mob. Um, we weren't I, invited. We were not invited, we, and... but they were all dancers, and they thought they probably thought we didn't. But I'm also a really good dancer, so I was I could have picked up those steps. Yeah, we also weren't around. We were like on a log flume, or we were like eating pretzels or something. We love to do our own thing and then complain that we weren't included after we isolated ourselves from the group. Uh, exactly, and honestly, it wasn't my time to do it. It it did hurt when I saw it online, and somebody did comment that they they saw us, and that was not us. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, I see Zachary and Jonathan in the background." We're like, Same trip, us. different gaze. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, but I think that would just be it would be a dream. That a was an iconic iconic place, though. You don't have to really dig it a, in like that. Well, it's I'm saying that because I have another iconic place that you could do. Okay, two. Great Wall of China. Okay, you'll get that joke if you listen to Monday's episode of um, Trail Mix. Okay, or. Whatever happened to the Mall of America? Whatever happened to the Mall of America? 
I want to visit the Mall of America before it inev inevitably becomes like overgrown with vines and YouTubers from 50 years from now will be like exploring the ruins of Mall of America. That's definitely going to happen. But I want to visit. I want to check it out. And I think that would be a great place for you to experience your first flash mob. I could do Yeah. Or I could, I could do it at the King of Prussia Mall. Yeah, you could. But yeah, I think we should go there because then when I'm done, I can get on a roller coaster. I just think if it's not going to be Disney, where else has the allure of a good flash mob area? For me, it's Mall of America. Yeah, but it's your it's your dream, whatever you want. I love that. Maybe I'll do it at both. Who knows? I yeah. just need I just need my milestone to be done one place. I like that. What is your next milestone? I've always wanted to have a really picturesque Christmas party where everyone's wearing kind of like cable knit sweaters. The tree is just overwhelmingly gorgeous. It's fresh, and there's a a, a, a grab bag of people. The local grocers there. The postman is the there. Po why is the postman there? He, you know, why he's there? Why? Because he gave me my jury duty. Okay, and he, and then after that, he invited himself in. Exactly, friends, family, the, uh, a light caroling, and a as we hit nightfall, a small winter squall hits the air, and a billowing amount of snow that's safe enough to drive, but enough to coat the grass and to really bring in the the Christmas flare. And everyone's enjoying themselves. A gorgeous honey ham is on the table. Perfect sides, perfect drinks. And everyone, and I hosted it, of course. Of course. In my beautiful house. And I just want to look around and say, wow, look at the community we've built. Yeah. I want that. And I, I know it's going to happen for me. I'm going to make it happen. But a classic Christmas party. Will you be playing my Christmas CD? Yeah, during hors d'oeuvre hour. But in my ideal part of the night, I can't have you riffing on... Snow White. I mean, um, Snowman. Snow White. <laughs> it depends. I have honestly, I have to hear the album. And is I, that fair? Yeah, that's absolutely fair. Yeah. But what will be happening? Because because we'll be living together, and everybody's gonna have their place set. I'm assuming we're gonna have a big dinner. Oh, of course. So in the giant dining hall, I'll have one CD on each plate. Okay. I, okay. I like that because you just have a little gift bag. A little yeah. gift bag. Yeah. Exit. Mm -hmm. Exit to the gift shop. Yeah. I like that. What about you? What's your last one? So my last one um, is a little bit of a callback to us on the Ferris wheel. I would love to make my own ketchup from my own homegrown topsy turvy tomatoes. I love that. I think it's a short term goal. I could probably do it next year. I don't know how to grow tomatoes. I don't know how to make ketchup, but it's something that I think I can accomplish if I set my mind to. I think the easiest thing in this process is going to be growing the tomatoes. Tomatoes are very forgiving. Everyone can grow a tomato, it seems like. Not everyone can grow a squash, for sure. Hmm. But everyone's like, oh, I have, a, I have a surplus of tomatoes. Come take some, make a sauce, put it in a salad, have some mozzarella. It's like, okay, we get it. Anyone can grow a tomato, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, the process of making cats up, it's going to be difficult. But I believe in you because you are a canner at heart. You mm -hmm. love to jar pickle you can sauce if you want yeah i'm very jarring mm, you are very thank you okay so what's your um your last milestone i want to host a sister wives reunion special okay go on the girl doing it right now god bless her she sucks she's <sighs> no she does she's been doing it for years and they the family probably will only talk to her she doesn't hit that she doesn't ask the hard-hitting questions she did better last season than she did previous seasons but i want to go in there and i want to i want the budget and i want to ask them what everyone's thinking okay I'm a sister wives fanatic if you're new here. Um, and I really want to sit down with Co um, Cody and Robin and be like, are you hoarding? Admit to having favorites. Why are you so butthurt about Christine when you physically pushed her away? The way you treat Mary is disgusting. Janelle is my queen. So I have a lot to say. And I think I deserve that spot. And this is a goal that I think is probably easier to get than the rest of my goals. Yeah. Because I've done the time. You've done the time. I just need TLC to recognize that. And that's all we're asking. A simple ask. So if you have any dreams out there, some commitments that you'd like to hit, I'd love to hear it in the YouTube comments below. Yeah. Just let us know what milestones you're looking forward to. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Attention campers, attention campers. There is a raccoon that is stuck in the vending machine. Unfortunately, we can't get him out. It's been it's been trials and tribulations of the last week. And honestly, he's okay. He looks comfortable. I did see him unpacking his suitcase, so I think he's going to be there to stay. I think he's gained some weight. Yeah, he's been eating all the snacks in there. Um, but unfortunately, the vending machine that's by the archery field is out of order. But if you're hungry, you can add over to the vending machine by Pollywog Pond. 
that one's up and running. Juicy users, 50 cents. Can't I know. We, we, we don't price gouge here. We mm. really keep it fair across yeah. the board. Yeah, for sure. Um, so sorry about that. But we do have an announcement before we get into the news. We do. On Patreon, if you're a Patreon um, member of Cabin 5, we do have a lounge available now, which is kind of like a Discord. So mm-hmm. if you want to connect with hundreds of other campers, you can join there and you guys can chat about things the episode, things you want us to talk about. And it's a great way for you guys to connect with each other and kind of grow the community. We had a meeting with Patreon. And they're like, hey, we have this new feature. Do you want to try it on your Patreon? And we were like, yeah. And um, it's up and live and you guys are already chatting in there and it's so cool to see you guys make friends so if you're looking for more of a community sense can we offer you patreon yes however it is currently as we record this it's only on the mobile app yeah Um, weird why is that the patreon rep said that it was gonna be on desktop i don't know why it's only on mobile but you do need you do need the mobile app but um plenty of vlogs on there plenty of funny videos of vlog which is posted on sunday of our trip to okc so new content there always um and patreon girly is always here at first yes that is patreon.com slash camp counselors i also just want to say really quickly that just if you're on there make sure you're in the cabin five tier we already talked about that but it's the only way you can like really see the content is if you're in that tier as of right now okay that's it for that welcome back (laughs) to morning announcements this is the part of the show where we share news with you that you might have missed that we want you to spread like wildfire because the mainstream media isn't saying it enough because it really isn't that hard-hitting but for us it is it's hitting hard baby do you want to go first uh, why don't you go first? All right. So this article is entitled Dallas Apartment Evicts Tenant Throws Belongings in the Dumpster, but it was the wrong unit. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. And the plot thickens. Okay. I only read the title because I was like, it doesn't even give half of it away. Oh, my goodness. So this is written by Steve Novilio from Fox 4 News. So um, this in Deep Ellum, I guess, is an area of Dallas. Yeah, babe, we were there. Deep Ellum? That's where we made the necklaces. Oh, you were right. Yeah, we were there. Oh my God, we've been to Deep Ellum. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so we've been there, guys. So a Dallas, a Dallas neighborhood called Deep Ellum, uh, this man says that um, this really kind of like fancy apartment building called the Hamilton threw him and his daughter's belongings into the dumpster. Okay, so when the apartment manager was telling the cleanup crew, he wrote the wrong unit number which led them to throw everything in the dumpster. So when the guy comes home, Everything is gone. The door is unlocked. The entire fridge is emptied out. All of his groceries, all of his daughter's stuff, and it's all in the dumpster downstairs. And it's been an entire day. So, like, the residents have been picking through it, being like, oh, Oh, a magic bullet. Wow. Cookie sheets. Like, everything is gone. Oh, my God. So, he's pissed. I would be, too. He goes to, the like, the manager, like, whatever. He goes to, like, the little office building, and he's like, what the hell happened? He explains himself. They are incredibly apologetic. They're like, oh, my God, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. We're going to get everything out of the dumpster that isn't ruined and bring it back up. And they had, like, the mattresses professionally cleaned. But a lot of this stuff was ruined. And he's like, I want money for my groceries. I want money for stuff I'm, like, missing. I want money for, like, this inconvenience. Rightfully so. Absolutely. So the manager department, like, goes to, like, look up, like, the information about the unit. And they find out that the lease was under his ex-girlfriend's name. (gasps) Okay, so the plot does thicken. The plot thickens. Oh, God. She, they broke up. She's living out of state. He has continued to pay the lease. He's not behind on anything. I think it's almost like $3,000 a month. Mm-hmm. So what they decide to do is they evict him. They now give him an eviction notice being like, okay, you can either leave in 24 hours or you can re-sign a lease under your name, but we're not going to be liable for everything that was lost because you were here like a, against you like broke the um the lease oh that is so shitty so fucking shitty because he wasn't like lapsed on any of his, his payments, payments. Yeah. yeah he just didn't change the name which is probably going to be an annoying hassle anyway so jason friedman is this guy abney is his last name his lawyer he's like the re- the rent was paid in full there was no reason to go in the apartment there was no reason to throw anything away the apartment building didn't know when they threw all that stuff away whose stuff it was whether it was the person on the lease or his so that was his like defense and all this, right? Like whether or not, yeah, absolutely. This news art, this news station keeps reaching out to the Hamilton. They're like literally not answering anything for comment, and the guy's like, "Hey, like I don't even care about like 
the apartment. I'll move anywhere. I just like want to recover this loss of property. Yeah. So then they like, so he's suing them and then they're counter suing or whatever. And then <laughs> at one point, this is even crazier. The apartment company, their apartment building's like, oh, well, while we were throwing out all this stuff, we found fake money. Like a, a, you. illegally, illegally like printed money. And the guy's like, yeah, from my daughter's playset <gasps> that says printed fake on it. It's like fucking monopoly money. They're reaching. They're reaching at anything to not be liable. Fuck the Hamilton. And I don't know if they're going to be able to like pass this because at the end of the day, he wasn't on the lease. From a moral standpoint, these people will rot in hell because mm-hmm. it's like he was paying the rent. Right. Things happen. He never transferred the agreement. I don't think he was going on for that long. And like it was just like the shittiest of all things. So now the guy... He's moving in the family friend. He's left the apartment building and he's in the middle of a lawsuit against the Hamilton. I can't. They had the chance to make things right and they made it so much worse Mm -hmm. on paper. I feel like it doesn't matter what it was on paper with like the name on the lease and everything. That is so shitty. And they're referring to the Hamilton as like a luxury apartment building. If you're from the Deep Elm area, you can kind of speak a little bit more to that. But I'm like, if if the rent is that high and there's so many units, like you have the money, you did something wrong. Make it right. Make it right. Because now, look at this bad press. It it's, looks awful. We're talking about it. it th- this would have been worse if he just threw stuff away. But to now try to evict him for this, it's like, and the guy seems so fucking nice. So sweet. Never never was late on a payment. Yeah. Him and his daughter, all their belongings, are living with a friend. She's nine years old. Oh, my God. We're back to school. What a, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. Oh, and all the stuff that they're just never going to get back. I hope, I hope diligence is due is done <laughs> yeah due diligence would be done <laughs> yeah i agree i agree so hearts out to abney and his family in deep ellum the hamilton can kick rocks and they are never welcome here at camp shady birch amen wow that was a crazy story i know and it really took some turns the guy's like there's literally like n- like on the fake money it says copy like it's it's yeah. blatantly fake. and it's, it's play money if it's play money it's much smaller you can only really get in trouble uh, i don't know if it's like the exact size i only know because like from prop stuff from doing prop mastery and film school yeah you have to like have it like it cannot be the exact same dimensions as a dollar bill and it has to say like play money or like Copy. money for prop yeah yeah exactly things like that on it so like that is null and void and it's yeah that's just such a bullshit situation damn i know well yeah. it happens we have a cabin here for him if you want oh that's really lovely abney if you ever want to come here for summer camp yeah hey juicy oozers are on me He's like, I'm trying to exist and live. I'm not trying to live at a fictional camp. <laughs> and to that, I say, correct. Do you want to say your story? This article is from the Associated Press, and it is titled, Police Stop Nebraska Man for Bucking the Law with a Bull Riding Shotgun in His Car. This is going to be an article, you guys, that you're going to have to go to the Instagram or watch on YouTube just to see this picture because it's not going to do it justice unless you see this picture. Yes. Continue. So, police pulled over a modified Ford Crown Victoria sedan with a bull riding shotgun after a 911 call about it driving on the main highway entering the city of Norfolk, Nebraska. So this car, it's like unbelievable and it's hard for me to describe. It's like cut it in half. It still has the windshield and the driver's in the normal seat, but there is a full blown bull with massive horns that is wider than the width of the car in the passenger seat on the highway. How did he cut the windshield without it cracking the entire, because half of the windshield is removed, correct? Um, so I zoomed in on the picture and it looks like he kind of got the entire windshield taken out and it's like drilled into plexiglass. So I don't even think it's a real windshield. Oh, that makes sense. You're yeah. Right. Let me give you a couple more features of the car. I'd love to hear them, please. Stop me at any time with any questions, doll. Uh, so the car has, like I said, half a windshield. The roof is gone. Yep. There is a metal yellow gate, like one of the ones that they use to like fence in, in, in a bowl where a bow actually belongs and it's zip tied to the frame of the car. Uh, there's a bull horn hood ornament on the front and the car itself, I believe is an old police car, but they took off the decal of the PO on the back and the side. So it just has lice. Weird. I know. It's so, so it's weird. So, I feel so bad for this animal. I know. I know. It is honestly, it's not a funny situation because this it's a real animal. It's a nine year old Watusi bull. Wagon wheel Watushi. And his name is Howdy Doody. I the bull did not deserve to be put on display this. I don't know if the I I would imagine the bull was in distress. Oh, hundred percent. 
was going down the highway. It was going fast down the highway. What was, I don't know if you're going to get to this. What was his motive? What was the okay. point? It's a little murky, but I also do want to mention, I do have a note here that I was looking at the pictures and there's just bullshit, like literal bullshit splattered all over the side of the car, oh all over the back of the car. bullshit. Yeah. And he's just nervous and they're driving so fast. You can see like, not to be graphic, but like how, you know, when you like, if you put something out the window and it's liquid, it goes like a crawl, like horizontal. Oh, you can see how fast Judy. they were going. I know it's awful. Absolutely awful. Um, okay. And he's nine years old. I don't know the lifespan of a bull, but that's pretty old. In bull years, he's 38. Exactly. So the driver's name is Lee Mayer. And uh, he usually drives Howdy Doody in this car in Nebraska's big rodeo parade where they go no faster than five miles per hour. It's a rigged car. It still shouldn't happen. But like it, it normally goes nine. Uh, I'm sorry, like five miles per hour in a parade. That's what Howdy Doody is used to. But he was driving on the highway and he wasn't driving to the parade because I looked it up and it happened in the spring already or the early summer. And nobody really knows why he was driving with Howdy Doody on the highway because when he would drive Howdy Doody to the parade, it would be on an actual trailer. like safe trailer. And he has one. He was just bored and looking for attention. And is he getting arrested? So... The, there's a video of the actual traffic stop and it went viral and Lee seems to be loving the attention. Of course he is. He's an animal. He would not make any comments, but his wife does. So her name is Rhonda Mayer. And of course it's a Rhonda. I know. And she told US 92 um, that Lee thinks he's a movie star after the video of him at the traffic stop went viral, but he's also a little shy. Rhonda said that Howdy Doody was a member, of, is a member of the family now, but it wasn't always that way. She said the amount of money that he spent on the whole darn project between the car and the bull, I could have had a brand new kitchen. So this whole article is like pretty lighthearted. And then you really start to think about like, damn, this bull doesn't have a choice in what, what it's being put through right now. Yeah, I think I, I'm whatever, if it's funny or or not. I just feel bad for the bull. Me too. And then I got a little frustrated because the police stated clearly there was some traffic violations to Mayer's car, considering the fact that he made alterations that are not drivable or legal, and he's driving a bull around. Um, but the officer let him off with a warning as long as he got uh, Howdy Duty home safe. What happens? We're driving on a highway. What happens if we get in a car accident mm -hmm. and the horns from Howdy Doody goes through like a little kid who's riding shotgun? Exactly. This whole thing is ridiculous. I I love whimsy. I love fun. I don't like when animals are put in unsafe conditions. No. I say death to them all. <laughs> Allegedly. Um, but the Norfolk police captain is uh, Chad Raymond, who I'm beyond disappointed in. I feel like disappointed is not the word, but I'm trying to be a lady about it. Rhonda, Chad, Lee, look at the name. It yeah. all speaks for itself. It's it's awful. Um, but we should have like a bull sanctuary here at Camp Shady Birch where he could just frolic in the grass. I know. How do you do he would love Princess Girl? Prin oh, I don't think legally they could live together because that would just, one would bite the other. I know. Well, we could put Howdy Doody in a suit and tie. Oh, that would be so cute. And they could have their first dance. Well, all that to say, um, I hope Howdy Doody is rehoused. I think he's okay. I think he's okay too, but well, I am disappointed in the situation. Me too, but hey, thanks for sharing that with the community. So guys, please don't put your bulls in the front seat of your car entitled Lice weird it's really weird grab your bug juice and bear spray campers it's time to pack it up and take a hike welcome back to take a hike the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something we don't like to take a hike would you like to go first yeah i'll go first um what i want to take a hike this week is ways Okay. The application. W A Z E. I'm not calling apps apps anymore. I'm just calling them applications. Applications. We uh, have the time. We, I have the time, and I'm gonna bitch about Waze right now. So Waze, the application, is a GPS application you might be familiar with on your iPhone, um, or your Android. I'm not gonna judge, and I, I feel like it's just it's it's strayed so far from God's purpose of why it was put on this planet in the first place. Mm. Waze was created, in a sense, to take away the trials and tribulations of traffic on the road. Right. Something MapQuest could never do. Exactly. Like, it's interpreting, oh, no, big crash coming up. Take I-93 instead of I-95 and loop around the right way. Okay? Sure. I, I love that in theory, but now they've created a monster where everyone is using the app. So anytime there's traffic, it's like get off the highway here and take the back roads. Mm. And then I'm stuck in traffic on the back roads behind 180 people in a residential area because Waze thought that was being a smart decision. They should be sprinkling out 
these traffic suggestions to elite members or the first few that could be affected and leave the rest of us out of this insane option because now I could have been in traffic, at least on a highway, and I'm stuck in standstill traffic in front of Quiznos. It's like ridiculous. I agree. How do they make money? Like, I, how is it running? I don't know how they make money. Because I know, didn't the Jonas Brothers just do like a, a collaboration with them? Well, you know how they make money? From those little icons on the app. Oh, telling people to pull over and stop. Like Duncan's here. Cardi's furniture is here. You're so right. Jordan's furniture emporium. They do. They have those emporium stickers. Right. And they love that. The only thing I do like about Waze is the, and the only reason why I still use it is because they tell me where the police are. Yeah. As a speedy driver myself, mm -hmm. I like to get it going. And I'm not going to apologize, okay? I keep it safe, but I do drive on the faster side. And I don't want to be pulled over. And I like to know where the cops are hiding. And I wish if that feature was on Apple Maps or Google Maps, I would never look at Waze again. Yeah. But I do like it for that. I do like that we're all kind of like a little community working together to be like, hey, there was a cop back there. I'm going to report it. Like, I've already passed it, so it doesn't bother me none. But like, somebody always reports it. And it's usually pretty accurate. Yeah. Who are the ways reporters out there? I was doing that for, <laughs> I would literally do that when I would be driving to you. I'd be like, ooh, reporting that, reporting that. And then at the end of the year, it told me how many, how many people that I helped on ways. And I was like, sometimes I feel like my life is pointless. Then I remember how many people I help on ways. Wow. But is that a distraction while you're driving to be plugging information in? A hundred percent. It's very dangerous. I know. I like when they're like pothole. See, that that's a community part. And mm -hmm. that's different. Okay? We love communal. So the only part they're really responsible for that as a community we cannot do is the redirection of traffic. And they failed us. They have failed us as a community. It used to work. There's just too many of us on there now. And I'm taking a step back. Someone else take the ropes. Okay. I cannot contribute to this disastrous application. The ETA is never right. It's never right. No. And I also love on ways that you can change the voice. That's a fun little feature. I usually, oh, we do kind of use the voice. Yeah. Oh my God, we do. And it turns down the music and it's so annoying. Well, I like the, like the voices that in itself, like I use the eighties dancer sometimes. Okay. And she'll be like, whoa, slow down and get it going. Something like that. Is that real? Yeah. They oh, have I like guess a I 70s have... one and an 80s one. The Jonas Brothers have their own one now. They have a Morgan Freeman one. They really like have fun with it. That like, is fun. It is a playful app, but at the end of the day, I'm using you to get me somewhere faster. And I feel like they just haven't been doing it. Right. And then it's like, of course, traffic is inevitable. But every time I get in the car and I use Waze, it shouldn't be like estimated time in traffic, 40 minutes. Girl, if you knew it was going to happen and you estimated it when my car slows down, why, are, why aren't you telling me to get off the previous exit? I love when they're like, but still the fastest route. I'm like, is it, girl? Because I don't it? think it is. Yeah. Now I make my better judgment. I go with my gut. If it wants me to get off early, I'm like, mm, I don't trust it. Yes. Absolutely. 100% agree. So ways to take a hike. Please. What's your take a hike this week? My take a hike, I think we can all agree, is wet willies. Wow, when was the last time you got a wet willy? So, yesterday I was getting out of the shower. And I absolutely hate, I hate when my ears are wet. And it's, you know, hygienic. You take a Q-tip, you shove it in there, you clean it out, and it dries your ear, right? People are going to be like, I don't want to hear in the comments, don't use a Q-tip, Q-tips aren't good for you. What else am I supposed to be using right now? Right. What do people suggest? You The candlestick? Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, I, I know people don't want us to use the Q-tips in our ears, but like, Give me a better option here. What am I supposed to be doing? Can you imagine tomorrow you're going to come home. I got out of the shower. I'm like butt naked on the bed with a candle in my ear. I'm like, sorry, I got to wait 45 till this thing goes down. If that thing works, I'll do it. I Does, will. I don't know if they work. Do you think that they work? I think if they're done, if the, the terminology is called coning. Okay. And if you're coning, <laughs> if you're correctly coning, okay, you can have the results you're looking for. Okay. Coning 2012. So my thing is like people dump it out on camera onto like a paper plate and it looks like all this wax. But then I read some people who were like, Hey, my ear really just kind of like looks the same. Um, and it's just the fact that it was burning on the inside and you're dumping out some of like the parts that didn't burn. I'm not really sure. I've never done it, but I think that's something that we should partake in. Oh, I would love to do that. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, back to wet willies. Uh, who thought, who came up with that? A 1920s trickster. Trickster. And he lived in Brooklyn and he loved baseball. And he said, get over here. Yeah, show him. Put my wet finger in your ear. And everyone's like, no, you gave me a wet willy. And his name was Willie. It probably was a, a wet William. Disgusting. Who, like, you lick your finger. First off, 
gross to begin with, unless you're very hygienic and just use hand sanitizer. And then you're shoving it in somebody's ear. You don't know the ear hygiene of this person. I've and never it, done it. I think like you're attacking me right now. And it's non-consensual. No, I'm not attacking you. I'm just like, I had a lot of wet willies when I was growing up and it was just really sick, nauseating, inappropriate. And there's a time and place and that place and time is hell. If someone did that to me as an adult, I would swing. I would swing too. I'd be like, what, what are you for? You freaking old, you know, freaking wet willy licking your. Also, the sensation of having wet ears, I hate it. You don't like being wet on your legs. You just like don't like being wet. I have, if I'm doing the dishes or I'm drying something off and my one hand gets wet, I have to wet the other hand. Oh, interesting. Do you feel like unbalanced if you don't? That's not my quirk, but I have other ones, so I, I can't I can't shame your quirk. Literally, even right now, if I put this microphone down, my right hand that I'm holding the microphone with is a little more well, a lot more sweaty than my left hand. So when I'm done, without even thinking, I'm gonna put the mic down and then I'm gonna smear <laughs> the wet sweat from one hand to the other, and then I feel balanced. I, I just, like that. I just need like a little bit of balance. Listen, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Um. Do you think it's gross when people get food on their finger and they like lick their finger? Yeah. Yeah. I do that all the time. Cheeto? Yeah, like, yeah. So if I have, like, Cheeto dust on my fingers, I'm going to lick it off. Uh-uh. I'm, I'm going to not... suck it. No. I think you are, you are, you aren't. And I think some people are going to be on here and say, ew, that's disgusting. And then other of us are alone right now. And we're like, hey, that's me. And I know it's gross, but I still do it. And I don't anticipate changing my life anytime soon. But you know what, though? My immune system is great because I'm constantly giving it the natural bacteria that it needs to learn how to fight off um, diseases. So you look at as gross i look at it as um survival okay evolution so if you give someone a wet will you're gonna lick your finger again after you, you know you know what you're doing right now i know what it's I'm doing. not fair and it's not i'm not even gonna answer that question because you're not playing fair okay all right do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk over either way i'm giving them my boondoggle kitchen over welcome back to crush of the week. This is the part of the show where we tell you what we're loving, what we want to highlight, what we just want to bring together and just really be happy about. Does that makes sense. Do it. Yeah. Okay. So my crush of the week, I'll go first, is you know when you're driving and there's like a house and it's all lit up, but more specifically a building and all the windows are lit up. Mm. And you're like, oh my God, everyone's living like little ants and they're running around having these complex lives and they're in love. They're getting divorced. They're fighting. They're, they're friends. They're crying. They're cooking. They're sleeping. I love to have those moments when you're driving and you see it specifically in a window lit up and you're like a little microcosm of the world is existing and it's so important and it's there. I love it. That's beautiful. We were driving home from a concert and we specifically passed a skyscraper. A really big building. Scraping the sky. And there was all these windows were lit up. And I could see little bodies roaming around, watching TV, lights on, lights off. And I just thought, how incredible that we're all existing in this one little space with such complex lives. And it really made me feel grateful. And I just love when I have those moments of thinking about that because sometimes we take it for granted. It's very true. Like right now, somewhere in the world, someone's falling in love. A baby's being born. Someone's falling down the stairs. Someone's falling down the stairs. Somebody broke their ankle. Someone's screaming at an Uber driver. Somebody's baking cookies and they're going to be happier than they thought they would be when they taste them. Someone's baking cookies and they're burning them and they're really upset. Someone's at work right now and left the oven on. Someone's running home because the curling iron's still on. Oh my God, I, that happened once. My friend Gabby had to go home from work and I, she was like, oh my God, and she had wood floors and it was a curling iron on the floor. Oh my God. I feel like that's something that as a man, I never have the stress about doing, which I'm really yeah. happy with. And some men, I guess they do straighten their hair. I shouldn't even say it like that. But I, it, for me, I've never had to worry about that. And I think if I've ever had that fear, like it would it would eat away at me all day. I'd have to go back. I did that before. I left a curling iron on at, um, or I'm sorry, a hair straightener on in college. Was it fine? It was fine, but it was scary. When I got home, I was like, oh shit, I haven't been home for like seven hours. And that thing is cooking away. It was cooking away. It was Graveyard Girl's uh, green hair straightener. Oh. I love that thing. Still works yeah. to this very day. Seven hours, mm. bird and throw. But I think that's beautiful, especially like in the city when you can really see how big the windows are and you're like, damn, every single one of these people have a story and they're all going through something. I know. And it becomes really magical. That's that's something campers you can look forward to when like the, the sun goes down really early because it can get a little seasonally depressing when the sun's down at 5 p.m. But on your drive home from work, if you're listening to this in December, just peer at the houses, see the lights on and just think to yourself, what's their story? Where are they from? 
matter of fact, where's everybody from? <laughs> and think to yourself, like, I love that everyone's life is just so specific and magical and we'll never know everyone's story. And I think that's a really amazing sentiment. And these people want to keep their private lives private, but we're telling you to look through their window. <laughs> yeah. Get out your car. Get in the bushes. Get the binoculars out. Yeah. Who cares? We do not condone that. If their windows are open, they're looking for they're looking for it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm obviously being We're going to get arrested. Anyways, what is your camper crush of the week? Guys, my camper crush of the week. You already know I'm watching Twilight for the first time. You're re-watching it with me. We have covered every single movie thus far in this segment. And last night, we watched Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1. So good. Honestly, the best one. I feel. Uh, the best one I've watched so far. I feel like the next keeps getting better. Uh-huh. The, the, the last one's going to be so good, obviously. I am so excited. I did want to, like... I did want to continue with our journey last night, but we had to cut it because I was like, let's just do one at a time. I'm going to get overwhelmed. So I just kind of want to talk about it like briefly. Um, the things that I liked, the things that I didn't like. Movie opens up. We've got Bella in her wedding makeup. Yeah. I want to f I want to talk about that, guys, for a second. The wedding makeup, it was a different time, but it's giving no makeup makeup. And at one point, Alice says like, oh, don't, don't smudge my work of art. I'm like, <sighs> right. Alice, you put some great eyeshadow on and some chapstick and said, send her out there. Like, girl, where where is any and you don't need makeup, but like let's not call this a work of art. Girl. No, I'm sorry, it's giving friend of the podcast, but it's giving Marsha 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 season 15, episode one. I'm sorry, that's on the wedding day. I know. It's I giving know. lip smackers. Yeah, there was no makeup put on for the bride. She, not that she needs makeup, but the way that they were all acting, they were like, Oh my god, a, a work of art, yeah. a masterpiece. Like before and after. I'm like, I'm not seeing an after. And me neither. So, like she didn't need a lot of makeup. She looked gorgeous though. Anyway, I thought that was interesting and of note so then jacob gets invited by edward to come and this is really where i feel like i flipped the switch because for the longest time i was team jacob and this really hit it home for me he was just acting inappropriately at her wedding nuzzling up to her neck being like are you sure you want to do this edward invited you why are you like kissing on the bride like right after she got married and she kind of loves it a little bit she does she's so she, problematic she is honestly i don't like bella that much i don't like to be honest, there's not many characters I do like. I think Alice is pretty much it for me. Yeah, Rose really had her moment this season too. Hey, this, this movie. She really But I did. do agree. I think Jacob was acting inappropriate. But yeah. he has a temper, you know? He's a werewolf. Exactly. And then I was going to say, oh, and that's such an excuse. Oh, he's a werewolf. He just, like classic Jacob, he just gets pissed and he runs off into the woods. And takes his clothes off. Oh, my God. Um, then they go to Brazil. I didn't think they would go to Brazil, but it was beautiful. I know. An interesting choice for their, um, for their honeymoon. I just didn't see it coming. Yeah, me neither. I would have thought. Iceland. Yeah. I don't know why somewhere tropical. Um, but they they ended up having sex in the salt water. I've never had a yeast infection, though I do believe it can be a catalyst for one. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll have to consult a doctor. Yeah. Um, they do move move inside where Edward breaks the headboard. Whose card is down on the room is what I want to know. Oh, uh, well, they're rich. True, but who who's paying the deposit? Because that room was destroyed. Generational wealth is in play, and I do believe that the whole entire bed frame was just pounded to a breaking point. Yeah, absolutely. While they were smashing pissers. Then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, would I have sex with a vampire? I would. Okay. Would you? Well audience listening if you didn't watch twilight you don't know the dangers of getting pregnant from a vampire if you're a human still i'm gonna having i'm having gay sex with a vampire okay I'm not getting pregnant by anybody right and i wonder if that's something historically that has happened before because what kind of dangers do we face let's get stephanie myers on the horn yeah we like, want a gay twilight oh my god yeah we need a gay twilight okay um, oh my God, if Edward and Jacob would just kiss, the movie would be so much There's better. a fan fiction out there for you. Oh, 100%. And I know what I'm going to be reading later tonight. Uh, so Bella becomes pregnant. Like I said, very dangerous. She's human. He's vampire. Um, she's looking gaunt. Yeah, the CGI on her face was doing wonders. Yeah, the CGI for a lot of other things thus far haven't been that great. Um, I knew she got pregnant. Um, just because the movie's so old, uh, though I hadn't seen it, but I didn't think it was going to go this way. I didn't know she was going to get so sick. I didn't think about the repercussions of having sex with a vampire being a human. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, she's very, very gaunt and then drinks blood for the first time. I know out of a styrofoam cup with a straw. She said, fuck the turtles. I know, but this is like a real guilty pleasure and you guys are never allowed to repeat this. 
I loved drinking out of styrofoam cups. So let me let me highlight some styrofoam cups. Um, Sonic. Sonic, yes. Tropical smoothie. Back in the day, Dunkin' used to give you a styrofoam hot cup for your like your cold ice coffee. I don't like styrofoam. I do. I really. Is do. it because it keeps the temperature where it needs to it be? It really does. Yeah, really bad for the environment. I think. No, it is, and that's why I agree with this. Yeah. Oh, this, is, this is a safe space for sure. I'm feeling attacked. Yeah, but if the straw punctures the smallest hole, boop. We're done. Well, don't be an animal about it. That That's very far and few between. I guess that is true. Um, okay, so like I said, Bella's pregnant. She, is, the baby's growing at rapid pace. She's, what is it, like two weeks she's pregnant for? I, feel, I think it's about five weeks. That's crazy. Did yeah. you know an elephant is pregnant for two years? I did know that, yeah. Oh, I was expecting. And a human's pregnant for nine months and a vampire's pregnant for like five weeks. Yeah. That's Hyper cuckoo speed. They're always so fast. Um, then there is the birth, the birthing scene, which I was not expecting. Graphic. It's so graphic. It was only like two minutes, but it felt like an eternity. It was crazy. I was sweating. I didn't know what to expect. And then, spoiler alert, guys, Bella dies. Bella dies. But not before Renesme is, is born. born. What do you think about the name? Um. So, okay. I guess maybe they just don't say names enough because they speak split Edward and Jacob's mom's names because Edward's mom's name is Esme. Am I correct? Yeah, but I think Renee, isn't that her mom? Ren oh, 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 oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think it's Jacob's mom's Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be soups weird if it was Jacob's mom. I yeah, think, Renee and I'm Esme. I'm not sure. And they look the same. Those actresses who play Edward's mom. Or, and they do bear a striking the, resemblance. This, I was a little confused. I was like, wait, oh my God, they're literally not the same person. My bad. I know. Okay, so she gives birth. She dies. Edward bites her finally in a desperate attempt to bring her back. And then at the end, I knew it was going to happen. I just knew it. She turns into a vampire. To be honest, I didn't know she turned into a vampire. I didn't. You didn't see that coming? No, I could see it coming. But like I I, I felt like if she was going to be a vampire, it would have happened already. So when, this, when the car, camera started like panning up to her face, I'm like, oh, I know she's going to open her eyes. They're going to be red or like really gray or whatever. Yellow or whatever yeah and it, the movie's gonna end and that's exactly how it ended it was just it was very exciting i'm excited for the next part it's my crush of the week and then i'm gonna be stop i'm gonna stop talking about twilight guys after next week's episode i just have to wrap it up we're in the very last movie but i've been really enjoying myself with twilight yeah that was a good one it felt like that one that one went by very fast and it was long it was like two hours yeah we had to take a pee break what song's been sucking your head all week Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. Camp Songs. Being good isn't always easy. No matter how hot I try. Sorry, I'm feeling like Dusty Springfield today. Love that and absolutely respect it. So what is a song that has been stuck in your head all week? I'm so glad you asked for his third entry in our playlist. It's going to Noah Khan again. All right. Woo! You're gonna go far. Mm. So if you didn't know and you're not following us on Instagram, we did go see Noah Khan at Radio City. It was last minute purchase tickets. I got price gouged like a motherfucker. I paid $5.50 for our tickets. They were originally $180. I know that sounds insane, but I was going to have such FOMO if I didn't go. And I'm so not a live music person, you guys. Like I only see very select people. Like if I, a music festival, I'd rather die. I just don't like that. But if I really love the musician, I like have to see it. And I've been such a fan of the stick season, obviously, as you guys know. So this song is my crush, my camp, my camp song of the week. But the concert, but before I talk about this song, let's talk about the concert. Okay. Radio City Music Hall. Gorgeous. Iconic place. Iconic. The crowd really filled out. The opener was um, Rust, Rustin Kelly. Rustin Kelly. And I was like, is that R. Kelly? Yeah, you're like, oh, R. Kelly's rebrand. I was like, nope, make that joke. And he was really good. Yeah, so shout out to Rustin Kelly, a really fantastic artist. If you're really into Noah Khan, I would suggest also streaming him and checking him out. Mm -hmm. um, it was really fun. I cried. I danced. I swayed. I sang in a community of people who really understood his music. And the energy was great. The energy was high energy but also docile i would say yeah it was ideal yeah it wasn't like a rowdy crowd you mm -hmm. know what I mean? it's not a rowdy venue but it was packed it people was, were into it yeah people were really into it um a really funny story that happened we did meet a camper 
Hi. downstairs at the merch booth we did so shout out to you i believe her name was hannah hannah yeah hannah shout out to hannah thanks for listening to the pod um really exciting to meet you in the wild mm-hmm. um so right as rustin kelly was wrapping up his intro set i was like let's run to the bathroom let's get one more drink and i barrel out of our aisle because i am a moose some might even say i am a bull in an old police car a watusi yeah a watusi so i barrel out of the aisle you guys and i kick the person next to us is can who's also getting a drink or going to the bathroom right there they were gone from their seats their seats were empty it was on the floor you can't really see it i don't know what it was because we were drinking high noon someone goes to the beverage was a soda i kicked this can at full speed the ice came out of the cup and went across the aisle to the next oh so it was a can in a cup it was a can in a cup i felt terrible so we go to the bathroom we get in line for high noons i look at jonathan i say you know what I'm going to buy these people two high noons because mm-hmm. if I go back to that seat and they have no drinks and they're looking at me like they're pissed, the least I can do is just replace the beverages because I felt so bad about it. So we get back, we give them the high noons. They gladly accept. The girl's like, wait, are you on TikTok? I'm like, okay, yeah. So she did clock me. Yeah. So like, thank God. Because imagine if she went on TikTok and was like, this motherfucker just kicked my drink and didn't buy it. So I'm like, I'm glad I like spoke with the heart because that could have ended really poorly for me. Yeah, but you're a good person and you like, you genuinely were like, I feel so yeah. bad about kicking over whatever I just kicked over. And it was, I it's done a noble it, thing to do. You I would have done it regardless, it. but I'm telling you, as a person that works in the public eye now, you have to think about these things twice because people are really quick to like jump down and, and call it your character. But lucky for me, I am a good person. So I was going to do it regardless. <laughs> but lucky for me, I'm the fucking best, nicest person in the entire world. You you are going to have it. Yeah, I, of course. I have a golden spot there. So his name was Eli. I believe his name was Eli. I don't remember her name, but he was really sweet. We talked to him for like a minute. He's fine. They're vibing. He didn't even care. He was like, I'll gladly take a free drink. Yeah. And it was so sweet because later they left to get drinks and then they bought us a round of they drinks. They bought us a round of drinks. On that. What a great community. I know. So Noah Khan, his, his audience, his vibes, they really bring out the best in people. Mm-hmm. So it was really fun the concert starts he is absolutely incredible the entire show was just it brought me to my knees it was just i knew every song and everyone was screaming the entire time but the song i have to highlight yeah. is going to be you're gonna go far a great song so, so this was off of like his like relaunch of this the album he like re like like later after six season came out he like put on like five new songs so when this song came out my friend amanda texted me and, and she was like oh like this song reminds me of you so I get like 30 seconds into the song and I had to turn it off. Mm-hmm. I was like in tears. The song is sung from the perspective of a family member or friend of someone moving away. So you're going to go far. Let's us know it's okay to leave things behind in the search of our dreams, but reassures us that home will always be waiting. Oh, I have goosebumps. So I'm going to read you guys some lyrics because you know I love to. So pack up your car, put a hand on your heart, say whatever you feel, be wherever you are. We ain't angry at you, love. You're the greatest thing we've lost. The birds still sing. Your folks still fight. The boards still creak. The leaves still die. We ain't angry at you, love. We'll be waiting for you, love. And we'll all be here forever. And we'll all be here forever. Sure will. So I had a really hard time moving because everyone I love is back home. Like literally, besides Jonathan, like my entire unit of support is there. And I had a hard time moving. And when she says, why are you? I don't know. Why are you I crying? <laughs> Jonathan's crying. No, because it's really, it's a really sad message. You think you had, like, you leave everyone behind and you've done the same. Mm-hmm. And they're happy for you and they watch you go. And for me, I'm um I'm, I'm hearing it almost like sung to me, like as a it's okay that you left. And for her, it was like, oh, like, we're gonna miss you. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> so if you love to, I'm gonna stop now. Fuck off. We're doing a show. I'm a professional. If you love to cry at music and you've ever moved away, or if you've ever have someone move away, I saw a TikTok of a girl and she was like singing it from the perspective of like being the sister that stayed and her sister that left. And it was so sad. This song is so fucking sad, you guys. So to hear that live after I genuinely, for the first two weeks that song was out, I couldn't even hear it. I could not get through it. And by the time I got there, my eyes welled up. I could sing it. I was in a space of people who understand the impact of the song, but um, the impact, the impact of the song. Um, it was amazing. I can't even talk about it anymore. Because it's such a beautiful song, but it was amazing. <laughs> you look okay, like so <laughs> a crazy woman right now in tears. You okay, look in, yeah. you look insane. Okay. I love it. <laughs> he so that that's the magic of Noah Khan. Yeah. That's why he's made three entries on my my cam songs mm-hmm. because his music speaks to my experiences in my life so well, as he does 
to many of our campers out I there. I love that, like thinking about somebody listening to this on the camp songs playlist, which is linked below and you can listen to it for free. And like the next song is like, drink water and mind my business. business. <laughs> it's like Kim Petras next, yeah. yeah. It's a real, hey. Our, it our, runs the gambit. Yeah, it really is a trail mix for sure. Yeah. Oh my God. And also that does, speaking of trail mix and that story, it does kind of relate to um, a camper who did write in for something that we we did tackle in an episode of Trail Mix that is coming out soon. Yeah, exactly. Along the same lines as that. I agree. Do you have a song of the week? Okay, guys. Um, another downer. <laughs> so We can't help it. We love sad music. I know, but a sad situation as we record this just yesterday. Um, it's probably been a couple days now for you guys, but we lost Jimmy Buffett. And we love Jimmy Buffett. I grew up listening to a lot of Jimmy Buffett. We had the yellow CD that I would always listen to in the car. We had him on tape and all that jazz. Um, You and I love to go to Margaritaville. Yeah, I love Margaritaville. He had the cruise lines. He had the frozen shrimp lines. Yeah. He had the old time community. He had the the beer, which I love, but it did give me really bad heartburn. I can't. Landshark. It's great. What's the line? He owns Landshark. Yes. What a mogul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he definitely, he's a businessman for sure. But he made an entire career out of being leisurely escapism escapism Mm -hmm. and he's not even from anywhere like tropical i'm pretty sure he's from like minnesota no mississippi he's from mississippi i'm pretty sure so all that to say my favorite jimmy buffett song what is it is come monday how does that one go okay let me sing a couple bars for you and honey i didn't know that i would be missing you so come on day it'll be all right come on sing it come on Monday, day i'll I be holding, holding you tight i spent four lonely days in a brown la haze and i can't wait sorry fuck that up let it be let it be you got it you got there and i just want you here by my side you um really for the first time i think you really committed i did that was a, I, I, I got chills there's a hole in my heart in the shape of a parrot there's a hole in my heart in the shape of a cheeseburger well um so that was just a little shout out to jimmy buffett may he rest in paradise i hope he's having a cheeseburger do we know there. how he passed no um, they haven't I, announced it yet? I am aware, maybe by the time this comes out, but as the time we record this, it hasn't been announced, but he did have to cancel some future shows for a health issue. I'm not sure what happened. It's so weird, though, because, guys, he's 76, which back then when I was like a kid, I'd be like, that's so old. But now I'm like, no, a 76 is not that old, especially if you're a billionaire, because you should like have the access to like really good medical stuff. So uh, to me, it's really confusing. Like in the same breath, last week we lost Bob Barker. Yeah. 99. Mm-hmm. So 99, you you make it a 99, congrats, right? For me, I would love it to just make it to a point where I'm obviously, I want to like leave this earth before I can't take care of myself. That's my goal. But I think I, I would love to start sunsetting in the 80s. I'd be yeah. okay with that. 70s to me, it's really too young. And, it's, and Jimmy Buffett was loved by everybody. So it really is tragic. It is. I do. I am sad that I didn't get to see him live. I I did have the opportunity once, but I was in college and I like, it was hard for me to do. Anytime someone like passes, you're like, I should have taken that opportunity. So guys, like make the friendship bracelet, buy the concert ticket, live your life. This is a celebration. 52 weeks here at Camp Shady Birch. Yes. And it's been a joyous year. And we hope that we have been able to be your little bit of escapism. Yeah, in week. it's a literally the all we dream of doing. Yeah, you know, seriously, this is we're, what we want to do. This can be your own little cheeseburger in paradise. Everyone's Aww. like, "Hey, the body ain't cold. Stop popping on it so quick." I know. I'm just being silly. No, but seriously, R.I.P. Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. But on a lighter note, that's all we have for you this week. Yeah. But you know what? Monday is not so far away. Yes, come on day. It'll be all right. Oh my God. How crazy that we're how, releasing our first Monday episode next Monday. How kismet. Seriously, so Trail Mix will be its inaugural episode this Monday. We are going to continue this normal show on Wednesdays twice a week. Also, Patreon is still available if you want some more content. And we have our vlogs there. We've been interacting mm-hmm. there. They got the Trail Mix news first. Duh. 
And we just love you so much. So thank you for sticking with us. Yeah. And, and if you guys want to submit anything that can be read on a Monday, um, just a reminder, like, try to keep it a little concise. You keep it good. Make sure it's a good story. Everything's been great so far. I'm just saying, like, I know we're probably going to be bombarded and it's going to take a lot to go through all the emails. So if we don't pick yours, it might be lined up. One of the ones we're reading is from November of last year. I know. Ten months later, she's like, thanks for reading my story. Yeah, we had a Sorry. bookmark. We had a bookmark, but we had to get rid of the segments for a little bit. But they are back and better than ever. But you can go to campcounselorspodcast.com. There's a little write-in tab at the top and you could submit it that way. We'll always keep you anonymous unless you want us to say your name then make that clear in your in your email um otherwise we will keep it completely anonymous always yeah and i think that's all we have thanks for sticking with us we Thank love you guys you so much so freaking much and with that being said lights, lights out, out campers, campers.